Welcome back to the Payne's Creek Killings. The last thing we did is go into the church and look inside of Scott's box that was on his bed. Found a bunch of stuff in there, including the password to the meeting place behind the mansion, where Scott and Trisha often met, and we also found this key to a basement. I thought maybe it's for the basement in the church, but nope. Seems like you can't unlock that basement. And I think I actually figured out what it's for. Probably. But before that, I noticed something while I was walking around the church that I had missed before. So remember how we looked at this flyer here before? The funeral of Andrew Reed, and I was trying to remember who that was. I wasn't sure at the time. Well, now we know who Andrew is, of course. They're the person that drank a lot and seemed to feel guilty for something they did to... Sophia, and who worked at the mansion. Furthermore, I also missed a paper here. Mansion worker Andrew Reed's charred body found in his burnt home. Body covered with third degree burns all over. At around 11.25 p.m. last night, a fire broke out on 7 Black Pine Road. Andrew Reed, the owner of the house, was found with third degree burns from head to toe. He was seated on the coach in the living room next to the fireplace when the fire probably started. The cause of fire is not yet determined, but... But... S sings? Sings of alcoholic... S what? Sings of alcoholic bottles on the floor suggest there might... Uh, that might be a cause for the fire. I have no idea what that sings is supposed to be. According to possible witnesses, Andrew was seen drunk last night when he came back from Anne's Courtyard Inns and Suites. Police found bottles of empty vodka in the living room next to the fireplace. No foul play is detected at this moment. Hmm. Andrew Reed, a gardener and handyman for the Roberts family for more than two decades, has a wife and a son who currently live in Hillsdale. Okay, that's suspicious. I suspect they were murdered, and it wasn't an accident, of course. Okay, so seven, they lived at seven Black Pine Road. Seven Black Pine Road. Andrew Reed lived at seven Black Pine Road was found burned to death. Andrew. Um, I guess I'll add a new label for Andrew's home. Don't know if that's really necessary, but why not? Um, yeah, so my idea for this key, because it belongs to Scott and is for a basement and it looks kind of small, I'm thinking it might be for that one locked room in the ca in the cabin. Remember the one that seemed way too small to be a bedroom? Way too small to be much of anything? Now that I think about it, it's so small that maybe it's just stairs down to a basement. So I'm going to go check it out. Along the way to the cabin, I was looking for Andrew Reed's home at 7 Black Pine Road, and I think I found it. Because that looks pretty burned to me, and I see, like, a crime scene tape out front. Let's go check it out. Is that a load of documents? Nah, I can't read them. Yep, that's the place. Locked, of course. I'd sure like to get in there, although everything might be burned. What? That's what that key's for? I was thinking they were la Andrew Reed was last seen at the hotel, and that key was from the hotel. Well, all right then, awesome. I'm not gonna explore it just yet, though. 
I want to finish my current thought before I move on to it, so let's just do a to-do here. Actually, we can just change the one I already have. This one. I have key. Or, actually... It's unlocked. I don't have the key anymore, I used it. Okay. Alright, to the cabin. Aha! That is the key to the basement. This is a basement. No body? Okay. I keep expecting to find a body or something at some point. Thank god I can't fiddle with these switches. I was worried it would be a puzzle for a second. Huh. First time I've seen a pull switch for a light in this game. So it seems like nothing but the diary. February 4th, 1994. On Valentine's Day, Trisha gave me some chocolate. I've never seen that brand before. I bet it must be expensive. I've not finished making the music box. I had hoped that it would be her Valentine Day's present. I'll just give it to her later. Hopefully she can forgive me. Oh, yeah, that music box in Trisha's room, that's right. I don't have any way to unlock it, though. February 18th, 1994. It's been quite some time since I last talked to Father Matthew. He's always asking, asking how I'm doing after Sunday's service, but I tend to ignore him whenever possible. I know it's wrong. I need to find a way to make peace with him. April 19th. The grass has been... growing wild lately. The weeds are everywhere and Andrew's not here. Actually, he hasn't been here for quite a while now. I wonder what happened to him. I should visit him after work. September 23rd. I was about to pick Andrew up for work when I found him lying unconscious on the floor. There was an empty bottle of sleeping pills on the table. I immediately called the ambulance. According to the nurse, this is Andrew's third suicide attempt. She's glad that I saved him in time. An hour later, and he could have died. I don't know why Andrew would commit suicide. What I know is that he must be lonely. He needs a friend. September 28th. I visited Andrew at the hospital today. He's out of ER and is recovering quite well. While I was cutting the fruits, he told me his story. In 1972, there was a maid who came to work at the mansion. Her name was Sophia. She was... She, she was a hardworking worker <laughs> and had great personality. She was loved by many. A few years into her work, however, she had an affair with Charles. A child was born. When Vivian found out, she was furious and decided to kick her out of Payne's Creek. What happened after that was a tragedy. Okay, this is getting interesting. On June 26th, 1975, at 11 p.m., Vivian, Dr. Johnson, and Andrew confronted Sophia. A fight broke out. Sophia fell and hit her head on a nearby wall. She stopped moving. Dr. Johnson checked and realized she was dead. Her neck had broken. No one knew what to do. Vivian then asked Andrew to take care of the body and her baby. Andrew did what he had to to protect Vivian. After that night, they vowed never to tell anyone about it. As I left the hospital, I couldn't help but feel sorry for him. Before leaving, I asked Andrew what the baby's name was. He said it was Vincent. Vincent. Well, that must be a lie, right? I mean, it was Scott. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's why Andrew feels so guilty. And that's exactly what happened to Sophia, apparently. So, she wasn't poisoned to death by that medication that Johnson gave Vivian. 
Not to say they weren't attempting to poison her or something, but... Yeah. Hmm. And this is very specific about the exact date and the exact time and exactly who was there, so I feel like that must be pretty important for something. Like, something specific. So definitely need a note of that. That's going to involve lots of people. Alright, got it down here. Everything that happened. And something that I'm thinking is that it said that Vivian then asked Andrew to take care of the body and her baby. It's possible that Vivian didn't know that Andrew had actually... Well, wait. I'm trying to think of the connection between the baby going to the orphanage and then coming back to Payne's Creek, right? So I guess Father Calvin was the one who took the baby to the orphanage, right? The old pastor of the church? So I wonder if Vivian knew what happened with the baby at all. If Vivian just said, take care of the baby, that could mean anything. I guess it's Andrew who decided to give it to Calvin, and then Calvin decided to give it to the orphanage, and then, I guess, um, Matthew found out about that and liked the kid and ended up adopting him. Okay, I think we should go check out Andrew Reed's home now. Alright, Andrew, let's see if there's anything left behind. Creepy music again. <laughs> I'm guessing none of the lights work. Jammed. out for any hidden compartments or something like that. Oh? An opened safe. Stuff inside. Why is it open, though? Interesting. Somebody had looked in it already? Taken something from it, perhaps? Premium rums. Dear Daniel, how have you been, my son? It has been a while since I last wrote to you. I'm getting much better now. Dr. Johnson has assured me that I'm recovering well. I'm now working full time at the mansion. The hallucinations are gone. There are just two more checkups to do and I'll be done with rehab. How's mom doing? Is she still working at that restaurant? I hope she spends enough time with you. I don't blame her for leaving and wish I could be there for you. I'm sorry things turned out the way, uh, turned Turned out the way th this way. <laughs> Please forgive me. I've been saving my income and plan to... Stops there. bit odd. Psst. 
some sort of religious thing slash demon summoning. Andrew Reed's Diary. March 12th, 1994. I hate to admit it, but Scott is a good kid. He's hardworking, takes care of me when I'm drunk, and a man of his words. I'm starting to like him. June 10th. Did I see her again? How can that be? Doesn't the medication work anymore? Did he give me cheap pills? No, that can't be. He's as guilty as I am. We're all in it together. He cannot abandon me. They cannot abandon me. Ah, oh, so Andrew is hallucinating. So I've seen Sophia. August 2nd. Ever since Scott asked about her, I started seeing Sophia again. Why did he have to mention her? I need more pills. I think I'm going crazy. August 29th. Oh lord, I know I'm a sinner. I realize it now. That's why I'm going crazy. I know that nothing I can do, I, I do, can bring her back. I pray her sins do not pass down to our children. Please forgive us for what we have done. Hmm. Antidepressant. Prescribed for Andrew Reed. One pill daily. From Paints Creek Community Hospital. Prescribed by Henry Johnson. Oh yeah, that's much better. <laughs> I think we're done here. It gave me shivers. Okay, well, I think the main place we can go at the moment... With the knowledge we have... Oh, fuck! I thought you would disappear, though. Oh! <laughs> as soon as you look away, they disappear. <laughs> okay. Yep, there is a supernatural bent to this. Mm hmm. And it's not just me that's seen her. And not just Andrew, who thought they were hallucinating her. No, she's real. I've seen her. Stephen Moss saw her. There's a picture of, I think, her on top of the community hospital, right? Like on the roof or something? I'm pretty lucky I got a picture of that. If I'd looked away, I wouldn't have. Christ. It'd be funny if she didn't show up in the photographs, though. Never looked over here. Can I go through here? I don't even see a lock. No, I don't think you can go that way. Okay. What was I saying? Alright, yeah, so I'm all out of keys. I think the only place I know of to go at the moment 
as far as like unlocking a new area would be the meeting place of Trisha and Scott behind the mansion. I've also got an idea of something I want to do at the mansion, something I want to check, so let's head to the mansion. Well, no luck with my idea here, so this is the study room at the mansion. And I was thinking, remember, uh, what was it, Bernard's house? Uh, the whole dart thing? And how the dart passcode, the 445, was supposed to be a hint to the passcode to the desk drawer in the study? And I was thinking it was Bernard's house's study. But then I was thinking Bernard worked at the mansion, so perhaps it's the study in the mansion. But I don't know, it doesn't seem to be. I did 445 at the beginning and 445 at the end and tried the random combinations of the remaining fourth digit for every one, didn't work. I don't know, is there some, you know, some connection between that and these? These chess pieces? The five and the two? I don't know. Can't figure it out just now. Alright, let's head to the back. Hmm, broken part of the fence. Oh, there's a bunch of broken parts. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> it's nothing special. Okay, what was it? Let's look at the mansion here. 8831 Oliver from the photo lab borrowed a shovel and a wrench. Andrew. P.S. We have extras, so I told him he could keep the tools until he was done with them. Ooh. I'm not sure about the shovel, but I could definitely use the wrench. I could probably use that to open up the grate in the street. Remember, there's the grate that I need a tool to open, and I also need, I'm assuming, a hammer to open up the... Uh, to pry up the boards inside of Bernard's home. But then again, it says we have extra. Can I take that? Please tell me I can take that. Damn it. Alright. Take a good look. That looks custom built. Didn't I find a woodworking book somewhere? Maybe Scott made it? I don't remember if it was Scott that had the book. Two keys. Oh! Two more chess pieces. Hmm. Well, that's probably the password for the desk drawer, right? Trisha. Drawer. Okay, let's make some notes of this stuff before I start forgetting it. I have a key for Trisha's drawer. Label that with Mansion and Trisha. I guess I'll just also add a note that Oliver's photo lab borrowed a shovel and a wrench. Add a new tag here for Oliver. Now, what's this for? Looks like a mansion room key. Oh. Attic! The key for the attic, yes! I have attic key. Oh yeah, I need to note these too. I'm not sure if... The number that the figure is on matters at all for telling what order it's supposed to be in? I don't know, I could just try all the different combinations. I could kind of just brute force it, it's not too hard. 
So we got a one and a seven. Let's note that here. In drawer. One and seven. And two chest pieces. In not let's not call it a cabin, I don't want to confuse it with that uh shack. Oh, it's already tagged with mansion. Yeah, that's fine. I'll add in here passcode for study drawer. Pretty sure. March 26th, 1993. I like being with Scott. I can be myself in front of him. He doesn't judge me or tell me what to do. He cares about what I think. It makes me happy. April 1st. Scott and I have decided to have our own secret hideout. It'll be really fun. Mom will know that we're secretly meeting. September 3rd. I'm so glad that Scott is now working at the mansion, although having Andrew as a supervisor is probably not the best idea. He's drunk all the time. I don't want him to influence Scott in a bad way. September 16th. Scott has to work the garden the whole day. After that, he has some errands to do. I guess we won't be meeting today. I miss him already. October 1st. I wanted to learn photography, so Mom hired Oliver to be my tutor. At first, I thought he would be too old to teach. Plus, his techniques are probably too ancient. But when he came, I was surprised that he's a very humble person. Despite our age differences, we talked for hours. I felt comfortable around him. Then he showed me the photos he took. They were beautiful. At that moment, I realized I should not judge a book by its cover. I'm glad Oliver is my teacher. This bodes well for me, because that means perhaps in her desk drawer, Trisha's desk drawer, maybe I'll find a key for Oliver's photography. October 5th. Scott has finally finished moving all his stuff to the cabin. Winter. <laughs> Winter is coming. It'll be extremely cold in the cabin. A fireplace should help. Maybe I should knit a scarf for Scott. I think I'll visit him today. Okay, well we have a bunch of places to go. Let's check out Trisha's room first. Here we go, this should be it. Yes, please tell me that's for Oliver's photography. Dear Trisha, you can always stay at my place when you feel lonely. Dorothy. Oh, it's not, but the key to an entirely new house. So that's Dorothy's key. Okay. Well, now I can finally enter Dorothy's place. Oops. No, no, I don't want to add a note for that. I don't want to search. Dorothy. I have a key. I should add Dorothy as a label here. Do I have Dorothy? No. Dorothy deserves their own label. So I think the only thing not unlocked in Trisha's room is the music box. Yeah. Okay. So now there's the attic. And I think I want to do the study room thing with the, the chest pieces. I wonder if everyone's screaming at me for saying chest. Alright, so I'm just gonna brute force the password, since I know the password but I'm not sure of the order. And I guess I'll just show you a little bit of math. I don't know, it's kind of fun. So I wasn't sure how to calculate how many different permutations of the password there possibly are until a commenter on one of my Prey videos when I kind of had to brute force a similar sort of password uh, told me about how to calculate it, so now I want to share it with you. It's about to get a little bit mathy. 
So the number of permutations that are possible for a password, uh, in this case, is 4 factorial. And 4 factorial just means it's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And if it was 5 factorial, it would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I guess the 1's kind of pointless, though, because that doesn't change the end result, but yeah. So this gives you the number of permutations, which turns out to be 24, which is how many different permutations we have here. And the reason for this is because we have a four-digit password and we have four possible numbers to enter. So if you think of these as slots, right? There's a slot there, slot there, slot there, and slot there for a password. So for the first slot, we have four possible numbers that are supposed to go there. It's either the two, the five, the one, or the seven. So that's why there's four things that could go there. All right, now once you've selected one of those numbers, now you only have three things with which to put into the second slot. So if, for example, you've used up the two in the first slot, now it's either a five, a one, or a seven. So that's why there's three possible things that could go there, and then two possible things that can go there, and then one possible thing that can go there. So that's what gives you the total number of combinations. And that's only because we know exactly what the numbers are, and we know that they can't repeat. Right, we know each one of the numbers we have, the 2, the 5, the 1, and the 7, can only go into one slot. Alright, I'm a little bit nervous because I've tried every single one of the passwords except this final 24th possible permutation. Alright, so it's not just a simple... It's either not just a simple password of the numbers that are on each of these chess pieces. It's either not that simple, and you're supposed to do something with the numbers that gets you some other number, I guess, or it's not meant to unlock this. I mean, it could very well be for... You know, it could very well be for the thing behind the painting. The, uh... Oh, actually, wait, no, I don't think it could be the thing behind the painting. I'm pretty sure that's six numbers. Yeah, that's six numbers. Okay, I'm not sure what to do with that then. Well, let's go to the attic. Here we go. Oh, Christ, I hate it. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Please tell me this turns on. Thank God, that's a little bit less creepy. Now that I know there's... Sophia, the ghost out there. Everything's a little bit creepier. The Benfield. Secret safe instruction. Insert the clock key, set the time, turn the key 320. Oh. Well, I already solved that. That's a sad toolbox. There's gotta be usable tools in here, right? I mean, it's a garage. Items needed for the barbecue. Charcoal, grill brush, grill fork, lighter fluid, grill brush. Hmm? Why is grill brush on there twice? That's suspicious. Is this like a password of some sort?
could they be talking about a metaphorical barbecue? As in burning Andrew? Still don't know why grill brush would be re repeated twice. If this is a password, then that's five digits. I've seen four digits and six digits. I'm not sure if I've seen anything that takes five. I probably have. I just don't remember it. I wish I could get a better picture of it. It's probably barely readable. No, I don't want to look at that picture. This bin is too heavy, I can't move it. Smells like chemicals. Can only open that one. Wood glue. Not very exciting. Well, there is a literal barbecue. September 21st, 1993. I didn't feel well today. Had a nightmare last night. Cannot remember what it was like, but it was unnerving. I see Scott all the time now since he has started working at the mansion. He's always with Trisha. I used to be the one to hang out with Trisha. October 1st. Mom says she's she feels better these days. It is as if she forgot she even has cancer. I hope she recovers quickly. So is this Vivian's diary? Because I'm pretty sure Vivian's mother was sick, right? Because I remember that Dr. Henry Johnson said that he prescribed extra strong medicine to... Was it Magdalene? Vivian's mom? Extra strong so that uh, Vivian could use some of it to poison somebody, I guess. November 8th. Trisha talked to me today. She said Scott is busy recently and she feels lonely. I would never make her f feel that way. I cannot say that to her, but I will be there whenever she needs me. We talked a lot. I wish everybody, every day is like today. Oh, shit. I would never make her feel that way. Okay, so this is probably Derek the driver, right? I mean, this is the place where cars would be, isn't it? The garage? Yeah, I think this is Derek. February 14th. Today, Scott came and asked if I knew anything about Father Calvin. I only knew him as the previous church pastor before Father Matthew took over. I told Scott to ask Matthew about it. Scott didn't say anything and left. Looks like they aren't getting along too well. Yeah, I think I remember Scott saying they tried to talk to Derek. And that they didn't seem very friendly. So I think that's the other side of that encounter. Bottle caps. Charcoal. I think that's it, so really not much in here. How sad, no new keys. Well, I think I'm going to save that for the next episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to go look at Dorothy's home.